Hi, this is Mike Louthen, and we're back again talking about logic control of clock audio microphones as well as clock audio control devices. We've moved down underneath the table that was part of our previous demonstration. We have inverted the surface so you can actually see how the microphones are mounted and what products are used underneath the table to operate the control functions. And to kind of describe what each piece does, we have the ARM-102 microphone. You can see the motor capsule on it that raises or lowers the microphone element. Uh, the element is housed in the upper part. And we have two cables you'll find. One is a thin audio cable that routes back to the DSP for balanced audio. The second is a gray cable that provides all the control information to raise and lower the microphone. There is uh, an ARMC. This is the control box that allows uh, the DSP to tell the microphone what position to assume. Um, we'll look at this a little bit closer, but it has connections for the microphone motor, has a connection to the DSP to tell it when to move the microphone up and down, and it has a power connector for a supplied power supply. And it's important that when you make connections into the ARMC, you disconnect the power supply. Uh, otherwise, the microphone may not know what state it's in. And there is a blue LED to indicate there is power applied to the unit. On this side of our demonstration is a logic box. Uh, this is part of the DSP. It may be part of the DSP chassis in the uh, equipment rack. It may be mounted underneath the table. It just depends on your DSP manufacturer. In this case, it's a BIAMP logic box with a five conductor cable that runs back to the equipment rack and the BIAMP piece in the equipment rack. We have a 12 volt power supply with a terminal block and, and we are using a, a supply that's robust enough to operate both the motor in the ARM-102 and the TS-001 switch. It's important to use a regulated power supply and one with enough current to operate both these devices. Otherwise, your microphone operation will be sluggish and your LEDs may not be uh, suitably bright enough. You can also see some of the wiring here, and we'll look at this a little bit more in depth, but um, in our application, we've only connected one switch to make it very clear, and you can see we have a, a switch lead, a red LED, a green LED, a plus and a minus on here. We, we've gone ahead and unmounted our ARMC and turned it around so you could see some of the connectors that we talked about previously. And the unit does have flanges. It's designed to mount underneath a conference room table. And it has several connectors on it. Uh, there are several uh, Cat5, RJ45 connectors. There's an M1, M2. These are both motor connectors for two microphones on the front. There are two additional connectors on the back for a total of four microphones uh, able to be controlled out of HARMC. There is also a link connector, and this is very important. If I have more than four microphones, if I have multiple ARMCs connected down a table, I can link them together, and I only need one two-wire connection back to my DSP logic box. And this uses an RJ12. It's a somewhat unique connector to prevent it from being confused with anything else on here. And the two wires in here uh, run back to the DSP. One goes to the positive connector, and the other goes to uh, whatever output we've selected to switch our microphone position up and down. And finally, we have a 12-volt connector for a 12-volt power supply. We uh, also have a blue LED, and it's important when you're troubleshooting the system to make sure the LED is lit. Without power, the system won't work. It's also important that when you're making connections into the unit, you should disconnect the 12 volts, uh, simply because the unit won't know what position the installed microphones are in. So it's important to make your connections, then uh, attach the 12 volts.